Excuse me as I kiss the sky. I've been through a lot in my day. I remember when I was about 23, I was dating a 33 year old man. He was divorced. And during that time, of course I was financially stable. I used to help him pay his mortgage. One day he asked me to come over. I used to come over all the time and clean up his place, wash his dishes. Came over to his place one time, cleaned up the kitchen, cleaned up the dishes, and I found a wine glass that had some lipstick marks on it. And I'm sitting there and I'm washing the dishes. And I realized that it was two of everything. Two cups, two plates, two forks, two knives, pots. And clearly either he had cooked for her the night before or she had cooked for him the night before. And here I was, the one washing the dishes. See, I'm the kind of woman when I find out men doing some shit, I keep it to myself. I wait. I wait until the very last second to see how long you're going to try to play me. And then I get to that last moment and I throw everything that I notice in his face. See, that's how a woman with class do it. So let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you when pressure bust pipe. One night he asked me to come over to his house. He said he was going to the club and needed for me to stay there. Until he, you know, came back from the club. Now he must have knew he had me under his thumb because this was a real bold move right here. I'm in the bed. I'm chilling. I'm relaxing. I wake up. It's about 2, 3. He comes kiss me on the cheek, back from the club. He says to me, me and my homeboy downstairs smoking a blunt. I want you to stay up here. I'll come up here and get you when we're done. Just go back to sleep. So I was like, okay. So I fall asleep, paying no attention. Maybe 30 minutes later, R. Kelly clicks on. And at first, I'm not paying no attention. It's, it's R. Kelly. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about it. I'm just thinking this is music. I'm not realizing it's R. Kelly playing. So the slow music is playing, 12 plays playing. And something in me was like, it's some gay ass shit if two men are downstairs smoking a blunt listening to R. Kelly. That's some gay ass shit. So I get up, tiptoe down the stairs, and this man is fucking some chick he done bought home from the club on the couch. So I'm standing there and I'm looking. And I'm trying to make sure, I'm taking it all in. I'm trying to make sure that I'm seeing exactly what I'm seeing. So I say, okay. I'll say nothing. I'll turn around and go back upstairs. But I made sure that when I heard him about to leave, that I got up and I looked out the window. I looked out the window. And I seen her walking away. Wait till he come up there. Act like nothing wrong when he come up there. I waited. I waited till I kept finding more and more and more and more, more evidence. So then one day he was talking to me about his ex-wife and how he was getting sick and tired of her. So he was doing all of these crazy things to her to just piss her off. And he was just telling me all these horrible things he was doing to her to just try to make her life miserable. One day he came to pick me up. We went over to his house. We get to the house. It smells like dead person. I mean, it smells like nasty dead just person like all in his house like everywhere I'm like why does it smell like that like what is that smell he said I don't know it started smelling like that three days ago and with each day it gets worse and worse and worse so I started looking around trying to figure out what's that smell and I get to one part of the house I realize as I'm stomping my foot that that part of the house is hollow so I'm like, what's under here? So he goes outside and looks under the house. His wife done stuck some fish, like fish he went to go to the grocery store, under the house <laughs> with a note naming herself as the culprit. <laughs> I'm like, ow. Oh. So I just start fading to black slowly. And one day, 
He asked me for some money, which was normal because he asked me for money all the time. And finally, I just said, you know what? I ain't giving you shit. And you want to know why? And I just started naming off all of the women that he had slept with, how many times I had caught him, and he couldn't even say nothing. He was so stuck. <laughs> he was just like, uh. he was stuck. What could he say? I knew things about them that only he would know because he had been around them, but what he wasn't doing was cleaning up after these chicks. So fellas, if you want to cheat, do it better than a woman would do. See, women cheat. But see, women know how to keep that shit smooth. We not sloppy with it. We just know. We know how to keep our shit separate. For example, we're going to be cheating on our man, right? And I don't encourage any woman to cheat on a man. But if a woman's going to cheat on her man, she's not going to bring that shit into her home. You know what I'm saying? She's going to be fucking this nigga at his house and just leave it at that. She's not going to be bringing him into her house. She's smart. She's not going to be saving this nigga number. Just a whole bunch of shit. She ain't going to be doing. She ain't going to be seen in public with him. She ain't gonna be not using protection if it's for recreational fun. See, if a woman cheats on you and she falling in love with somebody else, that normally has something to do with the man that she's in a real relationship with. It's something that he's not doing. See, men, when they cheat, normally it's out of greed. Normally it's because, you know, the pussy was there. They couldn't help it. It was just right there. But when women cheat, it's normally a mental and an emotional thing. So if it's recreational sex for a woman, she's not going to fall in love with some guy. She's not going to be letting him come all up in her crib and have special privileges. It's just not going to go down like that. But fellas, you need to learn some tactics on how to be not as sloppy if you really going to be a cheater. How about this? Do some real shit. This this some real shit right here. Be a G. And just be flat out. I'm having sex with more than one woman and I'm not really trying to look for a commitment. Say that. See, men in Atlanta, a lot of sorry men from the South, they like to lie and pretend that they like you and then stab you in the back later and use you for whatever it is that they want from you. But see, what I notice about men from the North, generally speaking, normally the men from the North, if they want some pussy, they're going to say, I want some pussy. They're not going to beat around a bush. But men from the South, beat around a bush. It's like, <laughs> they lie and pretend like they're something else. And that's some snake shit. That's some fake shit. Like, you ain't even got to do all that with women. See, women, we like the truth. Just tell us what's up. It's a lot less complicated than you think. Never trust a woman that your man introduces you to, period. Don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and don't die. It's just a golden rule. It was just something about this bitch. It was something was just telling me this shit is all wrong. I don't think I'm understanding this situation. Yeah, this bitch right here? This bitch? This bitch right here, nigga? Oh yeah, this nigga. Don't even get me started on this nigga right here. So yeah, this nigga right here introduced me to this chick right here. She used to always tell me how she loved us both. Oh, I love you guys. I love you guys too much. Boo, boo, boo. Don't trust the bitch. Don't trust her. Don't trust that hoe that nigga fucked up. Yeah, I pulled the two chains on you bitches. She told me I should leave him because me and him was going through our little situation. He's a real aggressive person. So she was telling me to leave him. Saying all this negative stuff about him. Just talking bad about him. Girl, leave your man. Leave your man. Plus, she bisexual. She was like, girl, I don't know why he don't trust you with other niggas. He always getting jealous. What he needs to be worried about is if I'm going to take you away from him. Oh, when he found out she said that, he really hated her. Anyway, all of a sudden, after he found out that me and her was talking, when it was actually him who introduced me to her, he didn't want me talking to her anymore. It was, oh, I hate that hoe. I don't like that hoe. Don't talk to that hoe. This is all he was saying. And she was like, don't talk to that nigga. I hate that nigga. Just leave that nigga. Why you talking to that nigga? I was like, something is really not right about these two. I encouraged him all the time to be friends. I just said to him, you know, it's okay. Y'all were friends before. So it's okay to still be friends. You guys don't have any reason to beef with each other. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Me trying to be all patty peacemaker and shit. I asked the motherfuckers 300 times did they fuck with each other. And they both said no. 300 times. So I invite them both out. So the day of the party, a couple of hours earlier, she hits me up and she says, you know, I have a bad feeling about this. I don't know if I should go. So I ask her why. She doesn't answer. So as the night goes on, I'm like, okay. I hit him up. He says, I can't go out with you tonight because I got to work in the morning. I told him I couldn't find this thought. And he tells me that she is at his house. Wait a minute. What? 
excuse me. Let me get this straight. Let me make sure I understand this shit correctly. Oh, so you just told me you didn't want to go anywhere because you have to go to work in the morning, but you didn't invite me over, but yet that bitch is at your house? While you trying to explain, I be zipping up my suitcase. That's a red flag like a motherfucker. This bitch then canceled on me so she can go to my man house? And my man done canceled on me to go somewhere with this chick? <laughs> we your friends. We never do anything to hurt you. Why you mad? We your friends. Blah, blah, blah. We wouldn't do anything to hurt you. You can trust us. Oh, really? I can trust you, huh? I can trust anything you have to say, huh? First of all, let me just tell you something. When a person accidentally tells you somebody else's business or claims she was telling you something she wasn't supposed to tell you or he wasn't supposed to tell you, I'm gonna need for you to remember this. This person will be quick to tell your business to somebody that ain't even your friend. If a person got too much negative shit to say, that's another sign that you're dealing with somebody that you can't even trust. When a bitch cross the line with your man, she is not a chick that needs to be trusted and I knew that immediately. So I'm not telling you this because this is what I heard. I'm not telling you you shouldn't trust a woman that your man introduced you to simply because somebody told me that. I'm experiencing the shit. And please be leery of motherfuckers that look through your shit because this man, yeah, this nigga right here, look through my shit. I should have been leery of a motherfucker who took a picture like this. Niggas. I should have known that something was wrong with that motherfucker. I said, oh hell nah, fuck no. Something ain't right about this. Number one, boundary is crossed. Goodbye to you, nigga. Goodbye to you, bitch. I got rid of both of their ass. That's what you do. You don't pick. You don't pick the aftermath of a situation. The chick was like, girl, I could have told you something was wrong with him because all he do is talk about eating ass and pussy all day. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> when a nigga talk like that, you know a lot of nasty hoes jumping on that ride. That's what she said, it cracked me up. I thought that was funny. Yeah, he a nasty nigga. Now I know, you know, he tried to stick his dick somewhere where the sun don't shine. What's a golden shower, but instead of it being a number one, it's a number two. Fucking around with me, I think he learned his lesson about sticking his dick in poop shoots. <laughs> Let me tell you something. First week this man got in a relationship with me, he pulls up to my house with all of his shit in his car crying. I'm talking about crying like a bitch because his mama done stole $2,000 from him and then put him out. And you know what I did? I was a good woman. I let that nigga move in with me. I gave that nigga money. I cooked dinner for that nigga every night. I took care of him like a stupid bitch. But this bitch that he done introduced me to, that he done cheated on me with, before he met me, this bitch was treating him bad as shit. This bitch left him on the side of the curb, stranded some motherfucking where. The very bitch who was talking so negative about him is the bitch that he cheated on me with and is in a relationship with right now. I just, I just can't. How is a Cuban nigga that doesn't even speak? gonna complain to me about how much I get on Facebook to promote my network marketing business gonna be the first one to screenshot our private messages and post the motherfuckers to Facebook and tell everybody that I'm a crazy homeless person I cussed his ass out via text and on the phone and in the text I told him I was at a homeless shelter he's going around telling people I'm a crazy homeless person Newsflash, moron. I have a charitable organization called Gwinnett County Single Moms where I go to local areas and try to help out single mothers with their children. If you'd like to donate, please go to www.gofundme.com slash gcsmdonate. You like how I plugged in the commercial right there. <laughs> That's why I was at the homeless shelter, moron. I don't think this nigga be thinking sometimes. Okay, back to me needing this straight jacket shit. Am I crazy? This is like a crazy face to you, huh? That's, come on. It looks like a crazy face. Yeah, I'm crazy. I'm out of my fucking mind. I'm fucking delusional in this bitch. I'm out of my motherfucking mind after hearing you tell me that the bitch you're in a relationship with is the same bitch that you cheated on me with. And you telling me that you can't give me back money, experiences, 
tangible that you owe me because you don't want to make that dusty bitch mad. I just can't. I just, I just can't. <laughs> and then also says to me after that that not only is he fucking the girl that he cheated on me with, who he is also in a relationship with, he is fucking another chick. See, people tell your response to their bullshit, but they don't tell you the utterly ridiculous shit that they did for you to behave that way. How the fuck was I supposed to respond? I've been too nice from day one, so I'm about to show you what when shit get real look like. This shit is classic. This is like the classic tale of bitch, don't you trust a woman that your man introduced you to. Not Ever not dead the fuck ever. You hear me? But listen, I got a little secret. This ain't loving in my bitches. Fox only went on TV. In real life, bitch, karma come back around and quickly. After a situation like this, the only thing you can do is move on with your life, ladies. And ladies, sometimes you're gonna be good guys, and sometimes you're gonna be bad guys. But here's the ticket. When motherfuckers show you who they are, believe them. Do not give them motherfuckers the benefit of the doubt. Because when they tell a small little ass lie, or they do something real sneaky, whether it's small or not, them motherfuckers got some shit with them. But be careful who you trust, you know what I'm saying? Don't trust that hoe. My personal experiences are lessons. I tell the ladies my personal experiences so you guys can know what to do. So any woman who's going through what I'm going through or has been through what I have, please understand that you're not alone. And sometimes you make mistakes and guys, and that's okay. You just gotta keep moving forward with your life. Everything gonna be all right, baby. Everything is all good and everything happens for a reason. Everything works out the way that it works out for a reason. But be careful who you trust, cause I'm telling you, these bitches ain't shit, these niggas ain't shit, these motherfuckers ain't loyal, okay? That's what I'm talking about. That's the message for the day and message. Bike week. I used to go to Myrtle Beach for bike week. I love motorcycles, okay? And so I would go down to, you know, Myrtle Beach for bike week. Still haven't been to Miami for bike week, just Myrtle Beach. The only reason why I ended up in Myrtle Beach was because my cousin was going down there to follow her boyfriend because her boyfriend was going down there for bike week and she ain't want him to go down there with his cousin. And his cousin was like a player, you know what I'm saying? And she knew that if her boyfriend went down there by himself that he would be fucking mad hoes. So she convinced me to go half on a rental car with her to drive to Myrtle Beach from Atlanta. So we get to Myrtle Beach from Atlanta and I'm telling you, for some reason, her boyfriend and her boyfriend's cousin and her boyfriend's friend drove me to a point where I wanted to shoot myself in the damn head. So I ended up walking around Myrtle Beach by my damn self. So here I am, a girl with a bikini top on and some cut off shorts walking around Myrtle Beach alone. Somebody could have snatched my ass up somewhere. Anyway, I'm walking around all alone, hopping on the back of anybody bike. No helmet, no leather jacket, no nothing. Just on the back of that motherfucker. Just picking any random person, just hopping on the back. What was I thinking? So, I met a guy named Rob. Me and Rob went out to dinner. We had a nice time. I used to have this thing for Jay-Z and Rob looked just like Jay-Z. Plus, I loved his bike. He had a nice bike bike and I was like oh Rob oh Rob Rob this no I didn't sleep with him I wasn't that stupid but I did meet him and I hopped on his bike and he's a random stranger that was very dangerous Rob lived in North Carolina I lived in Atlanta and he would come down to Atlanta a lot because he had a lot of friends I'd never forget this motherfucking story okay this story rings in my mind over and over again 
but I have to tell this shit because you're gonna be like Salsa Ray, you fucking idiot. Rob was coming to Atlanta all the time and he introduced me to this friend of his. His friend's name was Delon. And I hated Delon. He was like, ugh, I just hated his ass. He always had something smart to say, something stupid to say. He was always ruining plans between me and Rob. He was like this fucking parasite that I just could not stand. He was like egotistical and loud and like flamboyant. And he was real attractive. Very attractive, but he was just so annoying. You know how like Cameron is? Just loud and stupid and just Ugh, I just couldn't take it. And every time Rob came around and brung Delon, I was like, if you don't get that nigga on my face. And me and Delon will always be arguing all of the time. I mean, arguing like crazy. So then me and Rob decided to no longer date anymore. And, you know, we just really just decided that we didn't really want to date each other. Uh, he lived too far. He had this other girl that he was considering dating. And Rob used to always tell me about Delon's twin brother, Lex. Rob used to always talk about Delon and Lex, Delon and Lex, Delon and Lex. And for years, Rob always talked about Delon and Lex, Delon and Lex. And so, and so one day, Rob introduces me to Lex, right? And they twins. I see Lex, he all nice and smooth and calm. He just the complete opposite of Delon. Just the complete opposite. And I'm like, yo, this guy's really calm for his brother to be like an asshole. Like, you know, when you look at twins, you're thinking, you know, they gonna have some similarities, but these two motherfuckers was the complete opposite. <laughs> like, like, looking at Steve Urkel and Stefan Urkel. <laughs> it was like two different, two very different types of people. And I was like, yo, this thing is really different. So anyway, Rob leaves and about three months later, I see Lex out somewhere. And Lex asked me for my phone number. So me and Lex start talking and start dating. And it was interesting. You know, Rob didn't give a fuck. Rob knew. I told Rob about Lex. He didn't care. And so... Me and Lex start hanging out and going out and, and we did that for like two months, three months. And I remember this because it was right around the time New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve I had to work because I was waiting tables at Harrison's. Harrison's used to be that 30 and up club that Frank Ski used to DJ at. Anybody that's been living in Atlanta for a long time knows that. And so, this specific night, I had to wait tables. I was mad I had to work on New Year's Eve, but you know what, working on New Year's Eve gets you a lot of money. So I was like, let me just go ahead and wait tables. I need the bread. So I'm at work, work about to start. It's only nine o'clock and it's about to get popping because you know, 10, when 10 come, the club start popping. Everybody know that, okay? So I'm getting prepared, my phone rang. I answer the phone, it's some chick. And the chick's like, you been fucking with my man? First of all, I don't do shit like that. Who the fuck is your man? She was like, Delon. I was like, ew, bitch, I would never fuck with him. Like, what are you saying? I said, who is this? So she tells me her name, and of course, me and her have met because me and Rob and Delon and her went out to Papa Do's one day. We went out and had dinner together at Papa Do's. She's like, you all fucking with my man. I seen your texts in my phone, and I seen boop, 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 boop. And I'm like, bitch, I don't know what you talking about, but I do fuck with his twin brother, Lex. She was like, no! You know what this bitch says to me? You know what this bitch says to me? Lex is his second personality. He has two personalities and he hasn't been taking his medicine. <laughs> I said what? <laughs> I was like, what? Are you serious? She said yes. She said he has two split personalities. She said I have been dealing with this shit for quite some time now and when he doesn't take his medicine, he turns into Lex, who is his other personality. So technically, yes, you have been fucking with my man. <laughs> Like by far the dumbest 
bitch on the planet. And still to this day, when I think about that fucking story, I be like, why did my ass fall for that? It's easy to fall for some shit like that because I'm telling you, DeLon and Lex were two complete different people. Like, and I gotta say they names. I gotta say these two bitch niggas names. Like, if you know these two motherfuckers, nothing about DeLon reminded me of Lex. And Lex did not remind me of DeLon in no kind of way. Like, I'm telling you. Like, and I hadn't got close enough to DeLon to know like his mannerisms or know anything about him because I would always be screaming on him every time I saw him. So when he was being Lex, I couldn't put two and two together and think that this was the same person. But I'm telling you, that is a classic move. If you know DeLon and Rob or Lex, <laughs> please, please understand that they played me so hard like a fucking fiddle. And when I told Rob, Rob laughed. Like, Rob thought it was hilarious. Niggas do shit like that. I think Rob had something to do with it. I think he contributed to the situation. He wanted his homeboy to get some pussy. So, you know. And, and it's interesting, because I ended up sleeping with Lex. Um, we went out a couple of times, and then I ended up sleeping with him after that third month, actually. And who knew the 90-day rule wouldn't actually work? <laughs> You never know somebody know what I'm talking about. Yo, this shit is classic what they did to me. I can't stand when people be like, I don't judge people. Like, why the fuck not? Why are you even lying to yourself? We all judge people and make decisions every day. The question is, do you make good judgment or poor judgment? I'm out with a friend. He's considering wanting to date me. Let me just let you all know, when you're dating somebody, you need to factor everything in before you make a decision about this person. Judge this person. Think about it. So he says to me, I'm divorced. And I have four kids. And I have four baby mamas. This is what the man says. I'm like, whoa. You got four baby mamas. Homie, straight up, you can forget having any kids with me. This is what the man asked me. And he's like, well, why wouldn't you want to have kids by me? Oh, good job. What? This is what the man says. Why would I want to be baby mama number five? I'm like, homie, you can forget that even happening. That's not, that's not going to happen. I'm sorry, you can forget marrying me too. I don't really date divorced guys and the reason why is because I don't want to marry somebody that's already been married. Normally women who've never been married would like to experience marriage with someone who's never been married. So a lot of divorced people, when they do get married again, they marry someone else who has been divorced. So he pulls this don't judge me from my past shit on me, which I think is the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Let me tell you something, fellas. Please judge me. Judge the women. Do what you got to do. Do what's effective for you. Do what works for you. You need to take this kind of stuff serious when you're trying to find someone to start a life with. These things are important. So I asked him, I said, listen, I said, how would you feel if a woman had four baby daddies? How would that make you feel? He said, no, nah, I wouldn't even judge her like that. You know, everybody got a pass. People's past will tell you a lot about their future. Yes, people change. Yes, people learn lessons. But I'm telling you, not having enough self-control to not have four baby mamas says a lot about how irresponsible you are. And the false premises of the African-American community is exactly why our community is getting destroyed by its own people. Please judge a woman who has that many kids. Judge her. See, what you don't understand is what you do in your past and the decisions that you make affects other people and their future. If you got kids, trust me, and there's four baby mamas, at least two of them is asking you for a child support check. So that's cutting your money, not only in half, maybe, maybe even more. So we're going to be in a financial bind in some kind of way. Then people say, well, marriage is about love. No, no, no. Marriage is about money. In order for you to be married, 
okay? And we're not talking about common law marriage. In order for you to be married, you have to go to the court and fill out what? Some paperwork so you can get a legal document, a legal contract in order for the two of you to be married. It's always been about money. When you marry, your money changes. When you fill out your taxes, you no longer put single on that shit. You put married. You change the whole dynamic of your financial status and your taxes when you are married. Marriage is about money, not love. People love each other to death and still get divorced over money. So back to this baby mama crap. Judge, please judge someone who has that many baby daddies. You don't think a vagina is worn out that then had four kids by four different men? Seriously? That doesn't seem like something wrong? And people say, don't judge people. You aren't supposed to judge people. No, yes you are when it comes to them affecting your life. I wouldn't suggest anybody judge someone that's doing something for their life. For example, I'm a woman, right? I'm dating a guy. He has four kids. He has four baby mamas. Those decisions he made about his four kids was for him. That's what he decided to do for him. But then when it comes to him trying to come into my life, it's time for me to sit down and judge whether this is a situation I need to put myself in or not. I have to use my better judgment. We use better judgment and make good and poor decisions all day, every day. So when people say stuff like, don't judge the next person, it reminds me of church. It reminds me of some whole Christian religion thing that was pumped inside of a person's brain to make them believe that making sound judgment about another human being is a bad thing because only God judges. It's not even that deep. The level of judgment that I'm talking about has nothing to do with judgment day or the day that you're passing or the day you go to the pearly gates and God tries to figure out whether he wants you in heaven or not. That has nothing to do with it. While I'm on this planet, right now, I need to make the best decisions for my life. And the whole goal for my life is happiness and joy. My journey needs to be a positive one. And I can't have a positive journey with someone who is as irresponsible as someone who is having kids all willy-nilly all over the place with just anybody. Oh, it was a mistake. Oh, it was a mistake. Four times? times come on now come on you guys can't keep blaming and justifying the things that y'all doing or oh yeah I made a mistake no see when you run into somebody like me I'm not gonna bullshit you so you might want to judge whether you want to have me around or not because if you ask me my opinion about your situation believe me I'm gonna tell you the truth and I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna affect my life and whether we can continue rolling Pick your friends wisely. Pick the people that you decide to be with wisely. Pick them like they fruit. I'm talking about really choose. Be picky. And a lot of people settle out of desperation. And it's plenty of women. And I told him this. It is plenty of women. It's plenty of women in the Atlanta area who will definitely feel okay with being baby mama number five. Sounds like just ain't that shit. Hey, it's your girl, Sansa Ray. I want to talk about World Star Hip Hop today. How much negative feelings I've always had towards World Star Hip Hop. My beef with World Star Hip Hop don't have anything to do with how much ignorant stuff they put on their website. It has nothing to do with that. What it does have to do with was a long time ago when I was modeling, one of the representatives came to me and said, hey, you know what? We want to pay you. We want to pay you to oil your ass and do a twerk video and some thongs. We're going to give you $500. I was like, why is he trying to make that shit seem like it's so appealing? All right, all right. We're going to give you $1,000. I was like, no. All right, all right, we gonna give you $5,000. Shit's still not appealing to me, boo-boo. Then the fool says to me, don't you wanna be like... He started naming all of these girls that put some oil on their ass and did a twerk video. The girls that he was naming were very, very popular inside of the industry. Don't get it twisted, okay? But the problem was most of these girls were strippers or porn stars. And I was thinking to myself, did he really just ask 
ask me did I want to be a stripper or a porn star? Don't, don't you want to be like a stripper and a porn star? How many girls fall for this? How many girls have fell for the whole don't you want to be like such and such and such and they think that that's success? How many girls are falling for this? And if you turn to World Star Hip Hop Honeys and you see how many girls is in there twerking in a thong with some oil on their ass, you'll see how many women have failed for this bullshit. So, get this. The saga continues. I turn down World Star Hip Hop. Boom. Everybody, conversation over. Nothing's going on. Salsa Ray's definitely not doing World Star Hip Hop. They can forget it. So, one of my fans decides to email them a video of mine to put onto World Star Hip Hop. So the representatives at World Star Hip Hop decide that they want to reject any of my videos because they mad because I made a video about how I wasn't going to put oil on my ass and twerk for them. The hate is real. Come on, it's that petty. And this was like four years ago. So since then I haven't been uh, representative of world star hip hop like I haven't been the type of person that watches it I haven't supported it or anything and for what I've been understanding it ain't nothing but a whole bunch of ratchet negative stuff on there so I've been avoiding the whole site altogether so last night B's at my house I don't know if y'all know B B's my friend B's been my friend for a while you know that's my that's my friend you know what I'm saying and so he comes over to the house last night all right he telling me how he always watched world star hip hop and I'm thinking to myself, I can't watch that shit. I can't watch it. He's like, no, nah, you want? I'm like, I can't, can't watch World Star Hip Hop. So what he did was clever. What he decided to do was look up all of the vines on World Star Hip Hop and have me watch Vine from World Star Hip Hop. I seen some of the most silliest, craziest people in the world. Some of y'all are just so hilarious. Y'all are funny. Like, <laughs> you people are hilarious. My daughter watches Vine all the time, so, you know, I'm not surprised because she show me Vines all the time. She's cracking up at people, people doing some silly shit. But, you know, he used World Star Hip Hop as a way to show me that there are positive things on World Star Hip Hop I can watch. He also turned to the fireworks in Dubai. Uh, Dubai had a New Year's uh, firework display that was on for at least, I don't know, 7 to 20 minutes. And it was one of the most beautiful things I had ever seen. And you know, in America, we don't get to see a lot of things outside of our country that are better than stuff that's happening in our country. And when I saw these fireworks in Dubai, I was like, Next stop, Dubai, New Year's Eve, high five. That was me. I was like, nigga, we going. You know what I'm talking about? I stopped my, I don't know how many years this has been, five year, four or five year drought of not watching World Star Hip Hop because <laughs> they wanted me to twerk my ass. Uh, that was my World Star Hip Hop story. So um, my reason for not liking World Star Hip Hop had nothing to do with uh, anything that I may have seen on this site. So World Star Hip Hop does contribute to the wretchedness of the world. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I'm not, I'm not pro World Star Hip Hop now. But I do appreciate my friend D taking the time out to show me um, some other things and uh, for me to be able to look at World Star Hip Hop a lot different than I was looking at it before. Hey, it's your girl Sansa Ray here. Got my favorite shirt on. I love this shirt. I love shirts that are built like this. I don't know, I just do. It's like my thing. It's like my style. I wear these all the time. This is my favorite perfume. It's called Pink Chiffon, if you're wondering how I smell. Like I have the uh, body wash and um, 
in the lotion I put the lotion on after I get out of the shower and then I have a body spray that I put on and I have perfume and it's all pink chiffon and I don't care where I'm at someone always compliments me on how I smell when I'm walking around smelling like this I love Bath and Body Works anyway I have Bath and Body Works everything my daughter has Bath and Body Works everything we just smell really 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 fresh I haven't always smelled fresh you know what I'm saying you know it was something that I had to learn with time uh, my mother was so cheap when it came to like smell good if it wasn't Dow soap she didn't want to buy it <laughs> Like if, if it wasn't the gold, you know, the gold dial soap, that old school big ass bar of soap, if that wasn't it, my mother wasn't hearing it. I'm like the smell good bandit. I got Glade for my carpet because I have two dogs. I have a Shih Tzu and a Cocker Spaniel, so I have Glade for that. Buttons! Buttons! Come here, buttons! Buttons! Not you, Jazz. I said buttons. I said buttons. Come here, buttons! Febreze. I have like 16 bottles of Febreze all over the place. I like things that smell good. I have Febreze candles all over the place. I, I don't know. I'm just big on smells and ambiance. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of sick. <laughs> I have like a smell good fetish. I don't know. It's kind of creepy. I happen to be on Facebook and I saw a link to this blog. Why all men cheat on loyal women. Now I don't think this man who wrote it was generally speaking about all men. You know, it's just what he called it and he probably called it that for shock value. So, um, blog, I re-blogged it on my website if you want to go to sunspray.com, it's on there. But um, he says, how a male treats a woman is not a reflection of her, nor is it a reflection on anything she lacks or is not doing. An overly macho, mentally weak, sensitive-minded male knows he does not deserve a strong-minded woman. In his mind, he thinks one day she will mentally awaken to the realization she deserves better than him and leave him. This is why males cheat on women to have power over her. He cheats on her to boost his ego. Wow, coming from a man who just cheated because the premise of the whole blog was his girlfriend asked him was he cheating on her. He said yes and then them two began to have a conversation about why he chose to do such a thing and this is what he says to her. He says that it's a mind game that men are playing with women. Weak minded men who after reading this entire blog, the bottom line is weak-minded men cheat and weak-minded women allow them to. So if you are a weak-minded woman after a man cheats on you and you stay, that is a confirmation that you are weak-minded. If a man cheats on you and you leave, that means that you are a strong, independent woman. Uh, he proceeded to say that there's a difference between a loyal woman and a weak-minded woman, and men tend to get those two kind of women confused. And you know, as I was reading this, I was like, wow, this is interesting. This is, this is kind of good. I could see how a man uh, could think something like this. And I'm thinking about all of the times I've been cheated on and I've stayed. I think that's only happened once. Like normally when a man cheats on me, I'm out of here. Like if, bye, peace, gone. Maybe you not happy, but you're not about to do that to me. I'm out of here. Um, I tried to be in a relationship. In my last relationship, uh, he cheated on me and I broke up with him. And then we spent a series of years trying to get back together where we were. So, yeah, yeah I don't even count that as a me staying. Because I, really I, I really think that cheating is a choice like people don't cheat just to cheat you know it's not by default it's a choice that people make it's very very selfish choice at that and if someone loves you a lot I doubt very seriously that you want to mess up something like that because it's extremely hard to find some genuine love around here um 
but I'm the type of woman, it, it isn't the cheating that bothers me. It isn't a man sleeping with another woman that bugs me inside of a relationship. It's the fact that you lied to me. Like, I can respect you as a man if you come to me and you say, hey, you know what, there's this other chick I'm looking at, I'm like really, really interested in her sexually, you know. And then I'm going to take a second and I'm going to think about it. I am not that arrogant to believe that my pussy is the best pussy in the whole world. I just don't believe that. I think there's plenty of pussies out here. I think it's plenty of women out there that's better than me, that are prettier than me, that are smarter than me, that are more attractive to me, to the man that I'm, I'm with. And, you know, instead of me sitting here being like, oh, I'm broken hearted because my man doesn't feel like I'm the only beautiful woman in the world. Now it's one thing if he treats me like I'm the only beautiful woman in the world. You know, as long as I'm treated good, I'm fine. And a part of being treated well is a man being honest with me. Like, that's the kind of relationship I want to have. I want to have a relationship with a guy where a guy can say to me, you know what, I'm feeling XYZ way. And, you know, I'm not going to steal your choice from you. You get to decide how you want to deal with me after this. And instead of him keeping something like that from me out of greed. Because men want their cake and eat it too. They want to keep their girlfriend and sleep with a woman on the side. Normally. Okay? And then there's those other situations where a man is just unhappy in his relationship. And he gets caught fucking around. But they were having problems to begin with. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, it's two different categories here. It's the selfish men that cheat, and then it's the men who are unhappy in their relationship, so they cheat. You know what I mean? So, depending upon what kind of man you are, hopefully, any type of man I get, regardless to what kind of man he is, he's honest. Because I can respect the man at the end of the day. Random chick hits me up. <laughs> She's like, yo, I gotta ask you something. I'm like, okay, what you gotta ask me? You know, go ahead, ask me. So, I've been seeing this guy for a little while, you know. I wanted to know if you wanted to come and have a threesome with us. <laughs> you know what's funny? Is me and this girl have had a conversation on Facebook maybe two or three times. Maybe text each other two or three times. She knows I'm bisexual, but she also knows that I only do that if I'm in a relationship with a guy and that's what me and my man want to do. I don't play side chick, boo-boo. I don't play, let me hop on some random dick, honey. So I say to her, listen, I'm not that type of woman. I'm not gonna be, you know, I don't, I don't do random dick. She's like, hold up, hold up. He ain't random. He ain't random. Don't get it twisted, boo-boo. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know you. I don't know him. That means both of y'all random in my book. I ain't even never met you in person and you coming up to me asking me to have a threesome with you and some random dude. Yes, your dick is random. I don't know him. He may not be random to you. He is random to me. I ain't never met him. You don't even know me like that. Before she asked me the question, her pitch was, I got something that's gonna be perfect fit for you. And then she asked me that shit. What have I ever given you any indication that this would be the perfect fit for me? Since when? when Tell me when we had this conversation. Please jog my memory. I got to hear this. She's always tried to holler at me. Yes, women try to holler at me all the time, but I try to tell lesbians this. Listen, I'm a bisexual woman. I'm okay with being bisexual, but it's something that I do with my man. That's something that we do privately between me and him. It doesn't have anything to do with, oh, I want to be madly in love with some woman. I'm not a lesbian. And people find that hard to believe. Like, they're like, well, how? aren't you a lesbian but you like women no there's a difference between a woman actually loving or liking a woman and a woman just being a straight up freak and I have no problem with telling the world that I am a straight up freak I don't care what you think about that the only person that's supposed to matter in this world is me and the person that I'm with you ain't fucking with them or me so <laughs> why should you be offended this one guy made this video recently and he had my name in the title and he was talking about how bisexual women should want to be married how can a bisexual woman even think a man would marry her and i'm sitting there looking like i, I just don't understand where y'all be getting this from like what are you thinking <laughs> like oh my god just because you like or are attracted to a man and a woman doesn't mean that you need them both simultaneously like i gotta have both like i gotta have a man here and a woman here and that's the only way it's gonna work yes no it is not like that at all because there are a lot of people who are into monogamy and, and bisexual women there are a lot of them out there who are into monogamy i'm a monogamous woman and i can only be monogamous to a man like i even tried it 
don't don't even, don't think I'm just saying this. Like I actually tried to have a relationship with a woman to see was I really a lesbian. And you know what? I was like, I can't take the heat. I ain't about that life. So I, I dipped out. You know, it's just not for me. It's, it's for some other women, I'm sure, but it's just not for me. So I do stuff like that for the man I'm in a relationship with because me and him like those things. Now, if he didn't like those kinds of things, I would just stay away from women. It's that easy. It's like, I don't know, if I wanted chocolate cake one day and didn't, you know, that's how simple it is. A lot of other people are um, gay or homosexual or, you know, lesbian because that's what they feel they should be. You know, I do it out of recreational activity, you know, and, and that's okay. There's a lot of people out there that uh, take other hobbies seriously than others, you know. I play basketball because I like it. I'm not going to try to play it professionally. It's not that deep, you know what I'm saying? Like, people want me to, uh, you know, be a certain way, and it's like, I still can't even get over this chick getting mad at me. She gets mad at me. She gets mad because I say I don't want to do it. She's like, that's why nobody fuck with you. I'm like, hold on, let me get this straight. Nobody fucks with me because I won't have a threesome with you and your boo. <laughs> let me help you out, Chica. These nobodies that you're talking about that don't fuck with me are exactly that. Nobody. I'm gonna need for you to be gone, okay, bitch, bye. <laughs> You coming to a random stranger asking a random stranger to have threesome like we've met. Like I know you like that. Like me and you done kicked it that way. I don't know you. These women, I tell you, I had to block her from Facebook, block her from a phone. I was like, these women be straight tripping. So I just started dating again actively. It took me a long time to get to this place where I can actively date, um, you know, go on dates with men, introduce myself, you know, I, I'm finally at that point and I went a long time with, without doing it. And so I just started doing it recently again and I put up a dating profile. And on my dating profile, I made sure that I mentioned that I prefer to date men who weren't African American. Now, I don't know if you guys know or seen uh, a video that I made called Black Women Don't Date Black Men. And I was basically explaining why I no longer choose to date African American men um, as often as I used to. It's a preference. I'm not really trying to offend any black men, but it's definitely a preference of mine. It's something I prefer. Um, Yes, I prefer my flakes frosted. <laughs> but anyway, it's a decision that I made for myself and um, a lot of men um, that aren't um, African American, I'm starting to find out, you know, a lot of them are really, really into black women, but black women don't give them the time of day and that's what a lot of uh, white men are telling me, and Indian men, and Asian men, and you know, so I was like, well, I'm just surprised. I mean, I was even surprised, uh, you know, the kind of, of white men that were contacting me because, you know, some people, I can look at a white guy and I say, I can say, oh, well, like, he's really, 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 really white. He would not even consider dating a black woman. Like, and then you can look at some white guys and they look like <laughs> they would date a black woman. It's just, it's just a certain kind of vibe or a certain kind of um, demeanor or mannerisms that they have. One uh, white guy in particular, he asked me, you know, explain to me, I want you to tell me what it is about black men that has made you stay away from them altogether. And I want to explain this and I'm going to try to be careful so people can understand and uh, just understand me as a person and why I made the decision that I made to uh, discontinue dating black men. It's always some bullshit with y'all. Y'all get on my nerves, you know what I'm talking about? That's in layman's terms, but let me be a little bit more detailed about it so you can understand. <laughs> um, when I'm dating a man uh, outside of my race, um, I tend to get treated a lot better. You know what I mean? Like, um, they tend to want to date. They tend to have a better response to love and commitment um, the culture is, is very very different from ours and you know they tend to believe in love and you know 
the genuine friendship and you know the things that most black men consider corny uh, a lot of men outside of the black race don't think like that um, I explained to this man you know I just got tired of being treated so badly and you know I was telling my mother the other day I don't really like to generalize black men I know there are some good black men out there and you know out of the many years that I've been dating I've met some really really decent um, black men but inside of relationships that I've gotten into and this could very well be my fault um, I don't like the way the men that I've gotten into a relationship have treated me. Like my, my male platonic friends treat me a lot better than men I've actually been in a relationship with. And normally I take my time when I'm dating. I uh, get to know a guy first. I, I'm his friend for a while first before we start dating. But you know, it, it, it tends to be one of them situations where I'm hurt in the end because they have betrayed me on a level that is unbelievable. And I don't mean something as simple as them maybe cheating or, you know, something that, you know, every woman experiences. It's on a level of deep betrayal that I can't even believe that they would either hide something like this or I mean, it's just on a level of bullshit. It's always something. But when I'm dating black men, it will be something simple as, Listen, a, a guy will say to me, well, listen, I'll treat you on the date, but I can't drive. I can't meet you. Or I have three baby mamas, you know, and, and one of them, you know, we can't live together. Or um, I don't really have a job right now. Or can you take me out? You know, I'm broke. You know, I'm like, damn, the first date you want me to take you out. Let me just get this straight. I don't mind paying for a date because I have the money. It's not that deep. But a lot of men will do stuff like schedule a date with you say they gonna treat you and then don't show up and cancel because they feel some kind of way about their own finances I've had a man do that a black man do that but um you know I've never had a man outside of a black man say to me that he's having financial trouble or he he's having problem with paying for the date and because I'm at a level of uh, financial stability where uh, abundance and prosperity is very very important to me and I focus on that and I always have some form of money it's rare that I'm walking around with uh, zero money it's, it's just rare so because I'm like that uh, the only men that kind of match me on a professional level and on a financial level the nine times out of ten they aren't black and the mannerisms of men who are not black are just more pleasant to me. I grew up in a multicultural place where I come from. Um, there were people of all races and we dated people of all races and, and it was no big deal up north where I, I come from. So when I moved down to the south and I seen all this racism and I had never seen this many black people in one place. I'm telling you, I've, I've lived in a place where it's a lot of black, black people but in the south it is way more black people than up north from what I've seen in, in just one place like you can go to one section of the city and it's black people everywhere or like you can go to anywhere in Atlanta within like a 50 mile radius it's a whole bunch of black people and when I would go to uh, the city I come from where I would go inside of the city um, I would see people of all colors. I'm talking about Asian, Filipino, Indian, people from Dubai. I mean, I've seen all kinds of different people, and that's what I grew up in. So when I moved to the South and I just started dating black men only, that's when the problems started arising. And, you know, since then, I have been dating all black men. I just started dating men outside my race again maybe uh, two years ago. When I first moved to Atlanta, I was dating men outside of my race, but I had stopped doing that and just started dating a whole bunch of black guys, and I see the difference. The point is, I just got tired of being treated so cruelly because men inside of the African-American community tend to think that the worse that they treat their women, the more manly they are, when in reality, the better you treat your woman, the better man you are, the, the better man you family man you are, the, be, the more respect you have for your women, um, the better you treat them, the better the man you are, you know, and that's, that's even with black women too, black women, the better you treat your man, 
the more good you are to him, the more good of a woman you are. And, and I don't think that the African American community understands that. I think they think break and fly or treating somebody like shit makes them a cool person, you know. And so I just got tired of being treated negatively by black men. And oh, I'm telling you, when I go on a date with a man that isn't black, Oh, I get treated so well. I mean, even the way that they just speak to me is just completely different. That that negative cloud that black men have over their head, men that aren't black don't don't have it. And anytime a man that isn't black uh, discusses race with me and he tries to understand why I no longer date black men, I tell him, you know, slavery has really done something to my people. You know, it, it, it's really done something um, negative to where it's so deep rooted that you wouldn't be able to understand unless you were black. Like it's, it's one of them things that it's just a stigma. It's just like this dark cloud that's like following black men around. There was a time where I was like, I'm never dating outside my race. You know, I really, really loved black men for such a long time. I was always attracted to black men. I always thought they were the most beautiful men on the planet. And it was just like, oh my God, black men are kings to me. You know what I'm saying? Kings. And now I see black men and I get disgusted. It's like I see a black man and I just like and I cringe. And, and that's bad. You know, I'm like 33 years old now. And I don't think I started cringing like that until like a couple of years ago. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm starting to see the difference in how I'm being treated. And I could just been picking poor dudes. Like a lot of people say, well, you chose those men. You attract what you are. And I wholeheartedly believe something like that but it's like how in the world am I capable of choosing a bad black man but I'm choosing a good man that isn't black if I was bad at choosing men wouldn't I be bad at choosing all men across the board because there was never a time while I was dating black men that I was thinking oh men that aren't black are better than black men. That's not what I was thinking when I was dating black men. When I was dating black men, I was like, black men are kings. Like, I really gotta get me a black man. Like, black man, black man, black man. I was just so pro black man. And then when I started dating uh, outside my race again and I started seeing how, you know, open minded they were and how uh, more flexible they were when it came to love and support and, you know, um, their culture was different and how they didn't speak uh, so negatively and, you know, uh, so harshly to me I was just like you know what I'm starting to see the difference and and now I can see the difference so well now even to this day I mean I'm still meeting black men and, and black men are still asking me out and I'm still a little bit trying to give them a shot but I cut them off so fast so early because it's like they do stuff when within, within like the first week or two to make me be like I can't even deal with that already. No, but that's a, that's about to go. I really, I really, really love uh, black men. Um, just, I really do. I really do. But it's like, damn, I, I love something I can't have. I love something that I can't even put my hands on because hugging a black man is like hugging a fucking cactus. Like, I can't, I just can't do it. It's, it's just too too hard. I mean, it's too difficult for me and, I, and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of uh, black women out there that can handle black men, handle the responsibility of dealing with a black man, but I, I just can't do it. It's just too much for me. Like, I can't be fragile around a black man. I can't be vulnerable. I can't be weak. I can't say, oh, hey, you know, I'm sick. I'm not feeling well. It's like I always got to be at a level of perfection all the time with the black man or I'm judged. That's the kind of situations I've been in with black men. I've been disrespected a lot and it could have just been the poor choices that I made in black men but now I'm making a better choice you know and the, and the better choice for me is men who aren't black and like right now I'm dating uh, just seeing a lot of guys different guys trying to figure out what kind of situation I really want to have because I'm trying to you know settle down and um, it's very, very few black men out there who are successful and have their shit together, finances together, heart together, mentality together, and they're actually ready for something serious. Like most of the black men I know that have their finances together, their money, their uh, career is going great. The last thing on their list is finding another black woman. 
So when I'm going on these dates with guys, I'm kind of sitting there trying to figure out, you know, why are you on a date with me exactly? Like if you're not looking for a relationship, why are we on a date? <laughs> so, you know, but with, with uh, men who are black, um, yeah. I'm definitely uh, enjoying my experiences with them a whole lot and I wish that I would have um, started dating men outside my race earlier. I could have avoided a whole bunch of heartbreak. On the dating site that I'm on, uh, men, black men are leaving me horrible messages. They're like, I hope you, you know, good luck with the great white hope, you know, just, just having a negative attitude and then they wonder that that behavior right there is the reason why like you guys are sending me like these negative <laughs> comments um, you know just little smart comments and you know white men and, and men that aren't black don't send me stuff like that so I'm starting to relate to a whole bunch of black men who are dating outside their race and they say well you know a lot of black sisters a lot of black women have an attitude problem I see what you're saying because a lot of you know, black men have that same negative attitude that I'm trying to escape. So I, I'm feeling black men when they when they say that. Not all African American women have an attitude problem, but I'm telling you, me as an African -Amer American woman myself, and being amongst a whole bunch of females, it's hard having a conversation with them about men because they so dumbfounded about it. It's like, damn, you don't know men at all. It's like. Me and a, a handful of girlfriends will be sitting in a room full of black women and you'll hear them talking about black men and we'll be looking at each other like, damn, this is what they think about black men? Like, they don't even understand men at all. And the majority of black women don't know what they're doing when it comes to black men. So, you know, I, I can understand the confusion. Like, our race has a lot of confusion going on. African American community has a lot of confusion going on. And, it's hard for me as a black woman to even find black female friends. I am not that arrogant to believe that my pussy is the best pussy in the whole world. I just don't believe that. I think there's plenty of pussies out here. I think there's plenty of women out there that's better than me, that are prettier than me, that are smarter than me, that are more attractive to me to the man that I'm, I'm with. And, you know, instead of me sitting here being like, oh, I'm broken hearted because my man doesn't feel like I'm the only beautiful woman in the world. Now it's one thing if he treats me like I'm the only beautiful woman in the world. You know, as long as I'm treated good, I'm fine. And a part of being treated well is a man being honest with me. Like, that's the kind of relationship I want to have. I want to have a relationship with a guy where a guy can say to me, you know what, I'm feeling XYZ way. And, you know, I'm not going to steal your choice from you. You get to decide how you want to deal with me after this. And instead of him keeping something like from, instead of him keeping something like that from me out of greed, because men want their cake and eat it too. They want to keep their girlfriend and sleep with a woman on the side, normally, okay? And then there's those other situations where a man is just unhappy in his relationship and he gets caught fucking around, but they were having problems to begin with. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, it's two different categories here. It's the selfish men that cheat, and then it's the men who are unhappy in their relationship, so they cheat. You know what I mean? So, depending upon what kind of man you are, hopefully, any type of man I get, regardless to what kind of man he is, he's honest. Because I can respect a man at the end of the day. This goes back to the whole me being bisexual thing. And I don't like to talk about me being bisexual because people are extremely judgmental. And you know what? I don't mind people having their opinion about, you know, what they do with their own lives or the opinions of other people. Because, of course, I have opinions about the behaviors of other people. But men say stupid shit to me like, if you're bisexual and you're letting your man have threesomes with other women, how could he possibly cheat on you? Coming from this perspective over this way, this is a dumbass question. Because everybody has their limits. Everybody has their rules. My only thing is, inside of a relationship, when I do decide to have threesomes with my man, you know, and I know this is TMI, but you know what, this needs to be talked about, okay? So, nine times out of ten, when a man and a woman is in a relationship, and a woman is okay with having threesomes with her man, she is okay with her man having threesomes when she is around. You know, when she is 
in proximity of what's going on and normally the woman has control of the situation. Me, with my man, as long as I'm the one that goes and gets the girl. You point out what girl you want, I go get her. If she down, me and her communicate. That's how this goes. You don't go and communicate with her without me. You don't go and have sexual experiences with other women outside of me. I was in a relationship where sometimes he'd want to sleep with somebody else um, and I'd be like, you know what, and I might just sit there and watch. And people are going to judge me for saying that, but you know what, I don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just what I like to do when I'm inside of, inside of a relationship. Now, I can't be in a relationship with a woman and it's just me and a woman. Like, I think there's a difference between a woman being bisexual or freaky or extremely sexual versus a woman being a lesbian. Like, because I can't be in a relationship with a girl. I try like let me just sit here and think about this like let me try it and see because when I got in my last relationship and when I was in my last relationship is when I finally explored being with girls because I don't think for a long time it occurred to me that I thought women were attractive you know people say are people born gay are people born bisexual I think my first sexual experience was with a girl and that was long long time ago my first sexual experience I was a teenager you know what I mean so I think I've always, in some kind of way, been kind of attracted to girls. I don't know if someone introduced me to this in a subconscious way or not, but I, just as far back as I can remember, I think I was looking at girls and was like, okay, she's kind of attractive. So anyway, whether it's a preference or a choice or born, doesn't matter. You are who you are. Fuck it. Anyway, when I'm in a relationship with a guy, the rule is just don't step out. Like, respect me enough to Talk to me about it first. See how I feel about it first. If I say no to the shit, oblige to the shit. You know what I'm saying? We in a relationship with each other. The recreational sex that we may have with a woman outside of it is just some recreational shit that we do as a couple that we bond together and do. And people don't even understand. I was talking to somebody about this last night. Uh, we were sitting down at Studio Movie Grill having a drink. And I was telling him, you know, a lot of couples who are swingers, you would think, okay, well, if they're inviting someone else into their relationship, they clearly must have an issue with their own relationship. But that isn't always the case because normally when married couples or couples who swing or couples who have threesomes, their relationship is great. Like, it's like 80% of the relationships that, are, that involve swinging or threesomes or something like that, they are so successful because they have a bond with each other. Now, one thing I can tell you about threesomes or swinging or whatever, it magnifies where you stand in your relationship. So if you have a bad relationship, threesomes aren't gonna help your relationships. It's gonna make your relationship worse. If you have a successful relationship and a strong bond with someone and you have threesomes, it just makes the bond stronger and stronger and stronger and you have a good relationship and you have a good rapport with each other. But it depends on the individual. Like. Both people have to have solid characters and, and that's another thing a lot of people have like a jealousy trait and for me like I said a minute ago I don't feel like I'm the most beautiful woman in the planet on the planet I think it's billions of women out there who are extremely beautiful who look better than me and I don't expect my man to not look at another woman you know I, I'm just not that woman so you know now that I've ex experienced what it was like inside of my relationship doing threesomes and stuff like that I feel like you know this is just a part of sex you know this is a part of of doing something to enhance my relationship just to have some fun together like a recreational activity and I get on people all of the time about having casual sex all of the time so sometimes I feel like I'm kind of being hypocritical because I would go ahead and have casual sex with a girl but does the does the rule still apply if it's a girl on girl you know what I'm saying like there's a double standard there because people people can find a woman sleeping with another woman extremely uh, appealing and it's a beautiful thing but if a man is fucking another man it's like gross you know what I'm saying so, so you know it's a double standard thing and you know I know people you know you get judged when you do things like this and, and when you openly admit to it especially on um, a social media platform as I'm doing right now you know um, I'm gonna get punched you know what I'm saying verbally comment comment oh bitch you a hoe I knew you was a hoe you was a hoe like Tommy saw the mayor said Enter. You bitch, you so, you so nasty. I no wonder you stink. Oh, boop. Enter. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. <laughs> you niggas. 
This bitch, bitch, you making a video about threesomes, you need to get a life. Enter. I'm talking about my life. Clearly I have one or I wouldn't have a channel. But anyway. It's extremely funny, the stuff that goes on, you know, people judge you for what you say, do, and act. So regardless, I could sit here and pretend like I'm damn Lady Gaga and let somebody throw up on me. I could be Miley Cyrus and put my face in between some fat woman butt cheeks. <laughs> I could do, like, something outrageous for YouTube or something. You know, I could be a, a nun, you know, or a minister. Or a Buddhist monk and still somebody gonna have something to say so it doesn't matter but I prefer to be honest because I'm very comfortable with who I am and, and I'm ready for people to judge me it doesn't matter call me freak hoe slut skank bitch I don't care it don't even matter I'm still happy at the end of the day I think people you know gonna disagree but that's okay you know you ain't got to do it I'm just I'm just informing everybody that wants to know because a lot of people are interested they're like you did that and there's a lot of men out there that can't handle something like that. They can't handle seeing their woman with another woman. Like, how? I don't know. Like, and I know some men who would love that. What? My girlfriend is okay with having threesomes? Here's the shit I don't understand. Are niggas quantum leaping through the time continuum? I could not talk to a man for six months and then six months later he come out of nowhere like trying to make a woman left off. Dude, we dated February 17th, 500 BC and here it is September 19th, 2014 and your ass is thinking that you got access to the exceptional twat. Damn it. Where are all the spoons? Don't you hate when you had all this cereal and then this little ass spoon? Yeah, I hate shit like that. Let me tell you something, fellas, okay? Just because you hit it once don't mean you will be able to hit it forever. Okay. If you're trying to get back with me, if you're trying to get back together, that type shit take time. You can't just be expecting that. What's wrong with you? I don't see you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm gonna need for you to quantum leap your ass back into the past so you can enjoy the pussy again because you ain't enjoying the shit now. Okay, you're gonna have to put in some work. Why are these niggas trying to speed through everything? It's like I'm on a regular path. These niggas don't even see time. Why are you still comfortable? Oh, because it's about sex. Okay. Yeah, come on, let's go do it. Nigga, what is wrong with you? You ain't even that serious. I think it's these ladies fooling y'all because these ladies be letting you back in no matter how many years you've been gone. I'm sorry, leave too many weeks if you want to. We ain't gonna be cool like that no more. You are going to have to refinesse that ass. I'm gonna need for you to start off from scratch. I know these ladies fooling you, letting you get a piece of their cornbread, but I'm telling you like this. My cornbread is for the person who is currently mashing my potatoes. And your ass ain't mashed in a decade. Boop. How many of you just slow down, fellas? If you're trying to get in good with the ex, all you gotta do is just chill, let it roll, be around. You know, especially if she's single. You know what I'm saying? Take it to the movies. Take her out to dinner. Kiss her on the back of the neck right here. You know what I'm saying? Be all smooth. Open up them car doors. Kiss that hand. You know, do what you need to do. Be nice. Be smooth if you're really trying to get it. Oh, you don't want to do all that work, do you? Okay. Then you don't want any ass then. Okay, wait, it does depend on what the bitch require. I mean, you might just have to just go get a cheeseburger and y'all in the game. You never know, each chick is different, but don't just walk up out of nowhere expecting for things to go back to normal like you never left. I'm gonna need for you to rethink your strategy. I'm the last person on the planet you want to have Twitter beef with. I done changed my Twitter account like five times already in the past four years. All because of Twitter beef. And it's never me that started Twitter beef. It's always somebody coming at me. Because they want to argue or they want to prove a point or they want to call themselves putting me on blast. Something crazy like that. So, you know, I've been avoiding Twitter beef for the past, I don't know, 
couple of months because I just the, the way I've been doing it is killing me. I just been starving the beast. Like, hit me up, say something crazy. I just be like, all right, all right, have a nice day, <laughs> and that's it. Like I used to just argue with them back, but see now I have no desire to be right about anything. I understand that people have different perspectives about everything, so I no longer feel like I have to try to convince somebody to think how I think. I'm just not as combative. Like, I guess I used to be combative, but now it's like a waste of energy. I made a video about whether people should respect porn stars and strippers and prostitutes and stuff. And I was saying in there how I don't really have respect for them. Because I don't, and that's the truth. And that's okay. I mean, I can't respect somebody that don't respect themselves. I'm just not the kind of person, you know what I'm saying? I, I, that's not how I operate. So, some chick, I guess her name is Simone Love. Simone Love, I think I didn't pay any attention because, I mean, she hit me up to tell me basically that after me saying that porn stars really don't get no real serious roles in real movies and mainstream films, she decided that she wanted to do a little correcting. She wanted to correct me. The bitch wanted to correct me. That, that That's really funny. That's how I answered her. I said, listen, I bet you the chick that you talking about, the one chick that got in the mainstream film or did something mainstream, he was white. She had a nerve to tell me some chick, I guess, what's her name? Storm Gray or Gray some shit, I don't know. Got to a mainstream film, got on this show called Entourage. And I'm thinking to myself, Entourage? <laughs> That is not nothing mainstream. It's almost a real actor, something that can get you an Oscar. So I went to go look at the profile and seen that this chick herself was a porn star. Here's the shit I don't get. How the adult film industry got an award show. People got a nerve to call pornography acting. I like to present the I love the way you fuck me award too. <laughs> Simone Love. <sighs> I still can't believe that they have like an award show for the adult film industry. How hard could it be to fuck? Or like you fucking don't get me even started on that because you know I try not to be judgmental I try I really do I'm trying over here but you know what I'm sorry I can't it's like that's how I choose to live it's a choice I'm like listen before this conversation could escalate to something else to where I just started just blatantly disrespecting this woman because clearly she doesn't have respect for herself I just tried my hardest to end the Twitter conversation so I say I'm sure you got some dicks to go collect. I don't even want to take up your time. I'd rather do something more constructive because talking to you right now is just really not peaceful to me and it's not worth it. I cannot talk to somebody I can't respect. I just cannot do it. I'm not even going to put myself through such a thing. That's how I ended the conversation. I'm pretty sure she kept tweeting after that because people started RTing her tweets. I just started reading them because it was just like, I'm not about to sit up here and argue with this bitch. Like, for real. Like, I'm really not. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not worth it. It's not that serious. Listen, boo. You want to aspire to degrade yourself? You want to be a porn star? That's your aspirations? Knock yourself out, boo boo. But, um, I can't be telling females to go do that. I'm a teacher. I'm a leader. I'm a positive forced not to be reckoned with. I can't advise people to have sex for a living with a straight face. <laughs> I know I know that's wrong. I know being in the sex industry is wrong. I know it with every fiber of my being. I know it because every fiber of my being is saying have sex when you love someone or want to procreate. Not for entertainment purposes only. That's why being single is the new Mary. Some stuff is just sacred in between two people. Not everybody. Not me, you, Justice Slayer, Pinky, Angel Eyes, Melody Bliss, Mr. Marcus, Screech, and Kim Kardashian. My bad, we not alike, Simone. Sorry, my bad, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I can't trust your judgment. You a dick collector, you know what I'm saying? My bad, let me show you how your pussy works. Ain't my ringtone. My bad, my POV is different from yours. Hi. I'm Simone Love, and this is how I see the world. Please, please come all over my chin. Don't you bust in my eye, nigga. My bad, Simone. My bad. I just, I just don't see life how you see it. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Right here, on my knees, on my knees, on my knees. Okay. I don't see it like that. My bad, I'm not trying to vote group sex for president. I can't tell females to be the scum of the earth and that's the only way they'll make it to the top. I'm a role model, dang it. Yeah, by the way, ladies, swallowing penis is a plus.
Especially when you're doing it for dollars. It's better opportunities than that. It's a more respectful, easier route than that. You love sex, okay, love it. I'm sorry, but it disgusts me to see a group of men in the porn busting on females' faces disrespectfully, bet at each other. Yo, I bet my crispy is creamier than yours. I admit, I like Brazilian porn. I like Brazilian porn. But I'm not finna encourage females while standing at the podium of influence <laughs> that being a fluffer is a great career opportunity. Or that being a cum bucket is at the top of the scrotum pole. The balls are at the bottom. How I feel about you being a porn star or however other many porn stars is not your business. That has to do with my own personal feelings about sex. It don't have nothing to do with you. You so vain. I bet you think this video is about you, don't you? S send me some tweets about some bullshit. Like, don't tweet me. I tweet positive stuff all day. Don't tweet me to argue. Why can't you leave a comment on a video like the rest of the regular motherfuckers? Why do you have to tweet me something negative? If you want to leave a comment about a video, leave it on the video on YouTube. Don't tweet me something. That's how I know this was purposely sent to me to start some beef. Because who would go all their way to do something like that? Somebody that wants some beef. Like, I don't have time for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. If your handle or your bio got XXX in it, please do not tweet me. Like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm an intellectual being, okay? I feel like you can get somewhere. You can get some bread with your mind, not your body, not taking off your clothes. You don't have to do all that. It's not that serious. You can do something much better with yourself. Sex is something that you need to do behind closed doors with somebody you love. Not all out in the open, just wide. Just, just wide. Just spread them. Just wide. You want to sleep with some sex industry individuals and call it acting for free. But I'm not about to do that. Mm -mm, I got better aspirations for myself that's higher than that. When you decide to do something better with your life that don't have nothing to do with the sex industry, which is the easiest thing to do because fuck it ain't that complicated. When you start, decide to stop doing something for easy money, then I can respect you. I can't, don't ask me to respect you any second before then. I don't care if you're a porn director. If you're a porn director, don't ask me to respect you. If you're a porn photographer, don't ask me to respect you. If you're a fluffer, don't ask me to respect you. If you a actress, don't ask me to respect you. It's not coming. You expected something and you're gonna let yourself down because I'm really not gonna do it, okay? And that's okay. That's fine.